Hi, I'm Ashy. Welcome to my January alphabet painting series. So this year I decided to choose a New Year's resolution that I feel like is actually doable. And that is to, for the first six, the first 26 days of the year, to paint a small, quick watercolor sketch that corresponds with the letters of the alphabet. This will help me be disciplined and help me paint daily for this first you know, month or so. And hopefully this will help me also build that habit of creativity and just pulling out the paints every single day. And it's just building that habit of creativity. Uh, let me know if you have any New Year's resolutions that you are deciding on for yourself this year. I'd love to hear your different ideas in the comments. So for each of these videos, I'll be using the brand new sketchbook that I'm starting this year. Um, it's Moleskin watercolor album. It's not the highest quality paper, but for quick watercolor sketches, it does the job. Let's jump in. Day 21 is you, is for umbrella. So I am gonna start this one with a sketch just because it's a bit more complex of a shape and I've practiced a few times and have not had much success with getting the umbrella to look like I want it to so we'll see how it goes today. Either way this is what my day is so we're gonna go with it. So I'm just starting with the handle and then doing the center um, like pole thing of the umbrella and then we're gonna see kind of the underside here of the umbrella where the support things come out so they're gonna come out kind of sideways different directions and then some of them you're going to see more of than others because of the way that the umbrella is angled so you know I'm using pencil so that I can erase as needed and then we're gonna come and do the sections of the umbrella. Let me continue this line up because that's where the top of the pole is going to be. So that gives me a little bit of a reference there. And then I can use that to kind of work on the top part here.
it needs to be just a little bit taller. Okay, now this section comes down like that and like that. So these bars that are coming out from the center and this center bar are all going to be like a dark gray. So I'm going ahead and drawing them in heavier with the pencil so that when I use the kneaded eraser to take up some of the graphite, then more of that is going to stay. And it doesn't need to be as light because it's... Um, gonna be dark anyway okay I'm gonna run with that that's acceptable on this sketch and so I really I mean I used a reference photo and I just um, tried to follow the shapes and this is a bit more complex than some of the other shapes that I've done but still if you just follow the curves you can make it look reasonably accurate. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so you can see that that stayed nice and dark, but the umbrella that's going to have um, different colors is lighter. So now we just have to get into painting them. And the top is going to be brighter and then the underside will be shadowed. So get my paints ready here. I'm going to do warm colors on this, so I'm going to do oranges and yellows and reds. So I'm just going to start with picking up some orange and do my first section here. And so I have my lines and now at this point it's basically just coloring in the lines and working on the shading. So I'm using a size 10 round, so it's like a medium round. I'm just going to rinse off the brush and then draw that color in to the center so that it isn't so concentrated throughout the whole thing and it leaves like a little highlight in the center there. Okay. And then if you want to deepen up some of the areas, just get more concentrated paint so that you're not adding a bunch of water to it. And just kind of tap that into the areas that you want to have more paint and it'll soften and bleed out a little bit. Because it's wet on wet so doing that wet on wet will make it have a soft transition versus a hard transition or a hard line. Okay so now I'm going to do, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. Seven? Three, four, five, six, seven, yes. So I'm just going to go ahead and do yellow for the next section. And that section right next to it is wet so I'm going to avoid touching 
the wet paint and just leave a little bit of white space there in between. And then this part's the same color, but it'll be darker, like a shadowed color of it. So I'm going to leave that more concentrated, rinse and dry off, and then blend out the top part. Lift up a little bit of a highlight, and then I'm going to introduce just a little bit of purple to the under side, not much, to give it that shadow color. So it's just going to cool it down a little bit by introducing the opposite color. Con so on the color wheel, purple and yellow sit opposite each other. And so when you mix them, you're going to mute the color. So you can see it's a little bit grayish. And that creates kind of a shadow color. Okay, so now I'm going to use red. And I want this to be a little bit of a warmer red. So I'm going to add just a little bit more orange to it. So my next section over here is going to be red. And this is dry now, so I don't have to worry as much about leaving space in between. And just get a more concentrated version of that same color to tap into the areas that you want to be darker. There we go. I'm just kind of cleaning up that edge a little bit by taking a very, very lightly damp brush, rubbing it along the edge, and then lifting it up with the paper towel. So I'm going to do orange here, and then again, um, I just need to mix this orange with a little bit of blue to mute it just slightly because it's now the underside. So I'm just going to take the smallest amount of blue, not much at all, and just tap it into that orange just to mute it some, make it a little bit less intense of an orange color. Okay. And then I'm going to take that color and paint that in on the underside here. So thing to like remember and know about shadows is that yes, they're darker, but they're also typically a little bit um, of a cooler color too, a little bit less um, vivid of that color. So by just adding that contrasting color in, it just gives it that little bit of um, variation between the shadow color and the 
in the light color. And then up toward the top, it's going to be even more concentrated color where there's more of a shadow, less light hitting it. So just kind of tapping some in to there. And then I'm going to rinse and dry my brush and just kind of tap that edge where it had started to dry to create a softer line. And then I'm going to lift out just a little bit of a highlight there just to make it again have some variety. Okay. Now I'm going to do the red here. So mix up some red, some more red, and I just use my orange, which this is cadmium red, which is orange, <laughs> and then rose. And that's a very warm red now, so I'm just going to mute it a little bit by adding some green to it. And if you add equal amounts of green and red, you're going to get brown, but when you add just a little bit of the green to the red, it does the, it mutes it, it gets that effect. Okay, and then same idea here, where the part that's most in the, under the umbrella is gonna be the darkest, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse not all of the color off the brush, but just some of it, and then take that same color down to the edge. And then I'm going to do orange again and then yellow again here. So mix up some more of that shadowy orange. Just add a touch of blue to it. Oops, wrong blue, but that's okay. And then same thing, just rinse off some of the color, not all of it. As I come more toward the edge where more light would hit. And then I'm just kind of pushing that paint up, more of the pigment up toward this under part so that it's more intense. Okay, and then now I need to mix a shadowy yellow, which I kind of already have here in the palette. Okay, and I'm going to use that for this section. Just gonna add a little bit of that shadowy yellow color under here too, just to make it a little bit more 
of a contrast between the top and the bottom. Lift out just a little bit of a highlight. All right. Now I need to let that part dry, but I can work on the handle. So I'm going to take my size zero brush and I'm just going to get some Payne's gray here. And this is going to have that contrast of kind of a cool gray with the warm um, umbrella, which I kind of like the idea of. And white space can be left to create just a little bit of a highlight. So always um, be willing to leave just a little bit of white space because you can't really get that white space back unless you introduce another medium like uh, gouache or ink or um, acrylic paint to get white on top of the darker colors. So if you think you might want a little bit of a white spot, make sure to leave it. You can always fill it back in later if you don't like what it looks like. So I'm just kind of going around the edges and then I'm going to rinse my brush and kind of tap in between and that'll create again just a little bit of a highlight on the handle. Now I'm going to switch to my fine liner brush. So this is the Princeton Select liner and it's a size one. It's kind of like a rigger brush. Um, so it can create those long thin lines. And I'm going to use that for the whatever this part's called, the stick coming up. So I'm going to do a line on either side, and if they touch, that's okay. Rinse, and then just kind of touch in between them. With some clean water. Okay. Then Get a little bit of extra water on the brush for this part and kind of let it blob in for lack of a better term blob in that's really technical okay and then I'm just gonna get some more concentrated Payne's gray and create these lines. I'm gonna turn this over because I want to draw it in toward the support post thing because then if I go over, if I overshoot a little bit, it's not a big deal because that's already gray. Okay. Now I need to create the lines between the sections also because there are the same color of metal posts in between the sections. On the underside only, the top side, you don't see the posts, so. Okay. 
And there is our umbrella. Now, just for fun, because I want to, I'm gonna take a big brush and do some splattering. So I'm gonna introduce a bunch of water to this red. Actually, I wanna splatter with some cool colors to make it look kind of rainy. So let me just get some blues here. Okay. And then just kind of tap it out from under the umbrella, where in theory we're protected from those rainy spots. And then I just need to let that dry before I go in and do the letter. Okay, now I'm gonna do the U in kind of the same blue color that I used for the splatters. is four and then I'm going to use red for umbrella and so I'm using these Chromatech brush pens basically it's watercolor paint in this brush pen and I can do the pressure strokes with them to create the calligraphy-esque writing which is one thing that I'm working on with this um, kind of sketchbook project for this year so I'm just I haven't quite figured out how to hold the pen. Like if I'm supposed to hold it more upright, like to get those thin lines, I have to hold it upright. And then for the thick ones, I should be able to just kind of press down, but I feel like I have to change the angle of my hand. Um. Well, oh, I'm changing my, I'm slanting these words again, but I'm worried about getting too long. Okay, anyway, umbrella, that does not look good. That's okay. <laughs> the B next to the R is a weird thing in cursive, and I don't know how to fix that. Anyway, this is definitely my most successful umbrella that I've ever painted, so I'm really happy about that. Um, at some point, I'll do a sketchbook tour of this, and I have some of my practice pages, so be on the lookout for that eventually. <laughs> so day 21 is U is for umbrella. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to see when each of my new videos drops. Have an awesome day.